Hi, William. Uh, we're going to take a look at your Emotive Squares project that you've posted to the blog. Give a little bit of uh, feedback and observation as we're, uh, as we're viewing it. We'll go ahead and uh, do a screen share here. Uh, here we are. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I'm looking at is um, the, the 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 accuracy of what you're what you're being asked to do. Um, are you labeling them? Did you put the the right um, you know? Did you title your your posting effectively? Stuff like that. And believe it or not, I mean, I, I know I'm mentioning it, um, and but believe it or not, that is something that is a, it's it's a bit of an achievement to be able to. Uh, fulfill all of the requirements as simple as they might be uh, is is a step that is a thing uh, you don't want it to get in the way of, of the success of your work so you've chosen to use the white paper on the dark surface that's fine um, you do get a little bit of bleed here as you can see uh, in your in your image it's not overwhelming but um, you know not every uh, not everyone used the white you've also got a little bit of issue here just with craft wise I'm not going to be overly particular about that kind of stuff on this project, but it's something to look at and to look for when you're uh, when you're working. I always wonder, you know, if the project that uh, you know as you put them together, uh, you put congested first, and then let's see, you put tension next. Are these the ones you did in order? Are these the ones you feel uh, are your most confident in? You put congested first because you're most happy with it? You, or is it the first one that you did? Or is it completely irrelevant? Um, I guess my point is, um, maybe it ought to matter, you know? Um, consider uh, how you're putting them together. I, I, I wonder, you know, about that when I'm looking at these uh, from everyone. So um, really what we're, getting at with these topics is the, 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 the nature of them. What's the nature of congestion? What's the nature of lonely? What is the nature of tension? Um, and when I say that, I, what I'm trying to get at is the visual nature. What does it look like? What, what does congestion look like? Is it a comparative thing? Do we need two things next to one another to, to get that feeling? Or can it be done as something with one large uh, uh, positive element with some negative space around it, things like that. And I would suggest that congested uh, tends to feel like, you know, something that is blocked, right? Congestion tends to mean that something is trying to travel, but it cannot because there is something in the way. And so what we're doing here, we might be thinking about uh, visually, is the eye. Um, as the viewer is looking at your work, does the eye fluidly move around the composition or is it sort of blocked in a bunch of different areas and it give you the few visual feeling of this sort of congestedness or this sort of blockage that's happening. You've got a lot of diagonals in your solutions here, which is a good thing. That's a good strategy. We talked about diagonals and horizontals a little bit, but um, your intuitive response to use that to create the energy that we're going for is a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure if we're quite leading the eye around the composition as well as you could. Uh, it's, it's done better than others, uh, but I think we could, uh, we could probably be thinking about how the eye is moving around the composition. All of these uh, uh, experiments, these samples here that you're working on is twofold, as we've said before. I put up three fingers, didn't I? Twofold. Um, the first being the construction of the squares themselves. That's the additive process, arranging them. Then the subtractive process of making the photographs. And so those two exercises are different things. The first, you're building. The second, you are giving a perspective. Um, and so what I look for in the, in the photographic compositions is use of the entire picture plane. And am I seeing a kind of perspective? Am I seeing um, what you want me to see? Am I getting a sense that you want me to see a thing? Um, that's the real sort of uh, magic about visual communication is when you can kind of suggest to the viewer you want them to see a particular thing. Now, tension. Uh, your approach here is actually very design-wise. You know, you're 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 being quite minimal here. There's one, two, three. You don't need any more, uh, actually. And I think this is a good sort of solution. It's very simple. Uh, complex doesn't mean hard. Simple is actually more difficult. Now, you you've sort of approached it one 
way, uh, another way, and then the same way, but closer together. And I want you to, to, to talk about the difference between this and this, and how much better this is. Okay, now this is an idea, but the horizontal gives you a different feeling. Uh, horizontal is a, is a bit of a pas passive feel. Um, but here you have the vertical weight that's, that's happening between the two, and then this little guy here that is kind of like separating the two, the two from, from each other. Now, here you've, you've allowed the larger shapes to break the plane, but again, we're working off of the horizontal. Then you had the great idea to turn it around and let them run off the top and the bottom. And what you're doing here is you're activating the entire space. And that's the main difference between this one and this one. So this one, what's happening is uh, you're getting a, a multitude of shapes that are happening. Suddenly, whoops, whoa, what happened here? Crazy mouse. We'll stay on here. Um, what you're getting is, is this, this energy here. Uh, that's happening now because not only do we have these positive shapes we have this triangle I mean the the, uh, the diamond shape here but we're also getting this sort of H which is creating a pressure there as opposed to here where we're farther away uh, the distance between here and here is less tense and so we don't get the feeling of the pressure that's happening right here as much as we do here and that's a, that's a really good thing, and I want you to, to, to observe that. I really want you to see that. Now let's look at playful. What's the nature of playful, right? Playful, would is it an uplifting experience, or is it, is it something that sort of feels heavy and like, yeah. of course it's an uplifting thing. You know, when you think about it, is, is it a, a fast-moving thing, or is it a slow-moving thing? We tend to think more playful is sort of fast, light, airy, that kind of thing. So, you know, the question is, again, uh, is what you're exploring here tying into that, right? You're asking yourself, so my choices that I'm making as terms of where I'm putting some of these elements, is that leading to the nature of the topic? Um, and, and the only way you'll know that is to take a moment, you kind of sit back and you think, what's the topic, right? I've got this word, playful. But what does it look like? What does playful look like? Until you know that, um, you, you're, you're exploring, right? So I want to ask, you know, uh, for you to, 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 to do that when you're looking at these, what are you thinking? You've got lots of, again, lots of diagonals. I, I'm seeing that you, in, that you enjoy order right that you enjoy these patterns that you're creating you know this has a pattern this is creating a pattern this is creating a pattern but is this lending itself to playful i think this one's better uh this one's in a better direction because you've got the weight kind of up in the air much more than this one um this at least gives you that uplifting feel but i'm not sure that the 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 angles the, are, are really what we're looking for. Perhaps they're just maybe need to be more juxtaposition, meaning maybe they're, they're not touching each other, maybe they're sort of playing off of one another to create the same sort of energy and feel. Um, I think maybe exploring that one a little bit more would, would, would benefit you. Now we're into um, to heavy. Now, uh, we just have a few examples here of the heavy. Um, and you're, you're really playing with this positive negative space in a way that, you know, your, 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 your positive shapes or the, the white is really becoming negative space and back and forth. This is an excellent kind of discovery uh, for you to have made that, hey, wait a minute, what's positive, what's negative? None of it is, is really predetermined. It's really all about perception in terms of that. But again, we want to get back to what is the nature of that theme. And so heavy, what does that mean? Here, there, you know, are we getting the sense that, that this is um, heaviness? Um, I'm not convinced that this is, is quite there yet. Um, I don't know that we're getting the sense that this is a, a heavy object because these objects down below, once again, we've got the, uh, because these objects down below, they don't necessarily feel like they're under duress. They don't feel necessarily like they're being pressured a whole lot. They feel pretty strong, like, oh, I got this, this is, this is fine. Heavy is, is a relationship, right? Um, heavy would be something that is happening, right? It's an active kind of thing. Uh, if I'm holding up this, this you know, uh, uh, Apple pencil, it's not heavy, 
right? It's, it doesn't feel heavy. But if it's, if, if it's doing this, right, suddenly that is heavy. Now notice my gesture. I'm leaning, uh, the thing, the object that's causing that weight is doing a thing. So it's a, a kind of a, a cause and effect kind of situation. And your pattern here that you're creating, which the designs are actually kind of cool, I think the pattern is getting in, a way, getting in the way of the gesture, of the weight that we're looking for to express here. Lonely. Now, lonely, I think, you, you've got the idea, you've got a general idea of what's going on here. You've got one area and then you've got this other isolated area. Um, but I want you to also consider, um, you know, lonely a contextual thing, right? I'm by myself in the office, right? That doesn't necessarily, wouldn't describe lonely at all. That could describe focused. That could describe uh, someone who is maybe, um, um, you know, just a, a, a loner, right? Someone who is, is isolated, but maybe not feeling lonely. What would be the feeling of loneliness? Uh, perhaps if the object that's being separated is not just separated by space, but separated by type. In other words, what if this little guy right here was at an angle, right? You've got all of these uh, shapes here and they're all straight up and down and then this one which is also straight up and down it's just moved over here it's similar but it's just removed I would say this is almost more like separation than lonely right because they're the same yet just put in a different position lonely might be something that is not only separated but considered the other or different right that kind of thing might have gotten you closer to uh, the heart of, of the idea of lonely. Again, I like your designs. Uh, I think we just need to work more on identifying the focus and the topic and doing what we can to, to, to really get at the heart of that. And it's not easy. This, this, is, this is a very like basic exercise. You're just shifting paper around on a table. It seems like really simple, um, but the goal is quite compl complicated. Um, and it's quite sophisticated to be able to do it. Uh, and we'll continue to practice it as we go. Uh, tension. Now, tension, your tension almost feels like your congestion. I, and, and in fact, I think this is actually maybe a better example of congestion because here what's happening is my eye is moving through the composition um, on this, this sort of repetition of the squares. I see a path. I see this one trying to get through here as well. So in this, in fact, this one is set up, maybe not so much tension and more congestion. And the reason is I'm getting a sense of movement and the fact that the movement is problematic, that it's being interrupted. And so hopefully you're getting the idea. Uh, you're getting the idea. I very much like your, um, your design sense. I think your uh, use of minimal shapes is excellent. Uh, I just think we, what we need to do is, is focus on the nature of the uh, concept and continue to uh, explore those concepts um, visually and and like I said this is not an easy thing to get to um, this is a nice tension here that you that you've done uh, that's a good one uh, because we're creating not just uh, the energy amongst the objects but we're again using the entire picture plane you've got these edges that are being activated this is an excellent excellent uh, uh, job here and I think even getting uh, to the to the topic really well also so William let's take a look at some of the feedback that we have here and I did notice that you didn't um, reply yet um, to the feedback and that's important I want you to to reply to the feedback. And the reason for that is what is the feedback, right? I mean, here you're listening to me talk about your work and, um, you know, you can agree or disagree. I mean, that's fine. I mean, uh, I, I can look at your stuff and I can offer you my uh, perspective. Uh, that perspective is based on knowledge and experience. Uh, and so it's neither here nor there whether you think it's the right perspective or not. Your intention to go in one direction and your viewer's observation, as long as that observation is genuine and done in good faith, can't be wrong. So, you know, David and Ruby have their ideas. They're offering something to you. The goal isn't for you to decide whether they're right or wrong or to defend your point of view. 
the objective here is for you to discover how do they arrive at that, right? If you're really open to wanting feedback, the idea is not to defend your work, it's to understand how someone is perceiving your work. And so when someone gives you feedback and they offer you, this is what I see, what I would encourage you to do, and I encourage everybody to do, not just you, but I encourage everybody to do, is to think not whether you agree with their side or with what they're saying or not, but how do they arrive at that, right? Even if they're telling you exactly what you want to hear, right? They're saying exactly the things you're hoping that they will say. Think about well, how do they get there, right? Because if you can understand that, you can understand how to deliver them something else, some other kind of uh, conversation visually, some other kind of information that might be helpful. And there you're starting to create your own visual voice. So feedback is really all about understanding. It's not about right or wrong. It's not about, you know, saying it elegantly or not. It's about understanding someone's perspective. And that's what we want to get to. So that's what I have to say about your, um, about your work. I, I appreciate, again, I appreciate the hard work. You, you, got, through, um, you got through everything um, quite well. And uh, you know, your exploration, it looks like you're genuinely looking to, to explore. Um, this kind of exercise is something that you can do while you're just hanging out. It doesn't have to be squares. It can be just literally stuff that's on the table and you're looking around and you're just making designs, right? Uh, it, it's just like someone doodling, but it's a three-dimensional uh, activity to continually hone, hone yourself. I mean, you may even find yourself, you know, sitting at a table and making little arrangements as you're as you're waiting for your appointment at the dentist's office and you're scooching things around going, I wonder what happens if it looks like that. Um, so I encourage you to keep looking at these kinds of things. Um, you'll clearly you're going to get a, a, a like a, a grade sheet that will have a grade on here. Um, this is more about just kind of talking to you about your work. Uh, there'll be more of these as we continue with the with the semester. Um, and I look forward to working with you. All right. We'll see you in class. Bye-bye now.